Hello, fifth graders. This is Miss Smith from Eisenhower School with your second lesson of Russian music. By the end of this lesson, you will learn what timbre is. You will be able to describe the timbre of traditional Russian singing. You will also be able to identify an example of Cossack dancing in a famous ballet. Last week, I asked you to list the Russian instruments you heard in this Russian folk song called Kalinka in a private comment in our Google Classroom. Let's listen to the first few seconds of the song to remind us what it sounds like. Then, I would like you to be able to tell me what instruments you heard and what happened to the tempo of this folk song. What instruments did you hear? The answer is the balalaika and the bayan. What happened to the tempo of this folk song? The answer is the tempo gets faster and then slows down and gets faster again. As we discussed last week, vocal music was the primary source of music making in Russian villages. Do you remember why? Instruments were hard to afford due to poverty in the village. Also, instruments were banned for quite some time. So what does Russian singing sound like? First, let's talk a little bit about a musical word called timbre. 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 Another word for timbre is tone. Timbre is the distinguishing characteristic that differentiates one sound from another, despite the fact that they might be playing the same frequency with the same amplitude. When we're describing a sound's timbre, we use words like sharp, round, reedy, brassy, or bright to describe them. Let's correlate timbre to flavor. Think of apples. They're a type of fruit that has a typical shape, color, and flavor, but inside the category of apples, there's a huge amount of variation. Some apples are very sweet, while others are more sour. Some are red, while others are green. They're all still apples, but each one with a distinct characteristic. Red Delicious is different from Macintosh, is different from Gala, is different from Honeycrisp. Even when describing one type, there might be variations from apple to apple. Same thing goes for sound sources. One category of timbre we use quite often is strings. Inside of the string family, we have violins, violas, cellos, and double basses. They have similar timbres and tones in some ways, but each one is distinct. When comparing two different violins, one might have a very bright sound while the other is more muted and dark. Even when playing one violin, we can produce different timbres by bowing a different way. Now that we know what timbre is, I'd like you to take a listen to these two Russian folk songs that are sung. Describe the sounds that you hear using adjectives. Be ready to share your adjectives for each video after the videos are done playing.
Which adjectives can you use to describe the sounds in that video? So which adjectives would you use to describe the sounds you heard in that video? Traditional Russian singing involves a lot of chest voice, especially for female voices. The vocal range for females does not go very high in these traditional singing techniques. An example of this was in the first video that we watched in the previous slide. Those extremely low male singing voices that you heard in the second video on the previous slide are typically done by a voice part called basso profondo, or in Russia, they call them octavists. Since singing voices develop over time, most Russian octavists are older men. Also, the Red Army Choir is a famous all-male choir from Russia. You'll hear them in this slide. Video, we'll take a look at a traditional type of dance called Cossack dancing. Cossack dancing originated in the Ukraine and southern Russia. Be sure to take a look at 
all of the leg power they use in order to do this type of dance. Different. I'm here in Manchester to meet Orlik, a Cossack dancing group that have been going since 1949. Cossack dancing is widely regarded as the national dance of Ukraine. It originated in southern Russia and Ukraine in the 16th century. It started as a way of men celebrating their victories in battle, but the dance style soon spread to local villages. That was amazing. Hi. Hi, I'm Neil. Nice to meet you. Hi, uh, I'm Petro, and these are the Orlik Cossacks. So, uh, tell me, apart from legs of steel, what do you need to do to be a great Cossack dancer? Well, you definitely need strong legs, but you need balance, yeah. you need confidence, okay. but you need a full costume like this. Do you think I could give it a go? Definitely. Looking good. Okay, so what's first then? You're going to clap like a Cossack. Okay, how do I do that? Stand apart with your legs like that. Yeah. Okay. Sit your chest out and then clap. It's quite easy. This Cossack dancing isn't that difficult. What's next then? Well, next is a step called Prishitka i Roznishka. And Andrei here is going to demonstrate this step. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Let's try that together, yeah? No problem. Woo. Ready? Okay. <laughs> that is difficult. That is really hard. So how would you describe Cossack dancing to someone that knows nothing about this? It's a powerful combination of high jumps, kicks, splits, yeah. and sometimes even sword fighting. But not today, so don't worry about that. Okay. Thank you. So the next okay. step is called Heide Crook e Skop, which means twist and jump. I like that bit. Can we go with that bit at the end? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give this a go. I'm not sure if I can do it. You count me in and we'll do it together. Three, four. Finish with that one. That, I feel that on the legs. Okay, I've had a great time. Thank you very much. Oh, hang on a minute. We haven't finished yet. There's more? There's more. It's the most difficult step that we can think of for you. Okay, show me. This is called Pose the Nets. It's where you're going to squat down and kick your legs out. Watch out for the extra move at the end. And finish. What do you think? Yeah, that looks really easy. <laughs> okay, one yeah. more count. Three, four. I think I almost got it. You're almost there. <laughs> Excellent. So you've got all the moves. Let's put them together. All in a big routine. Okay. I think I'm ready for this. Yeah, you all look confident. <laughs> Another type of famous dance that is often associated with Russia is the ballet, The Nutcracker. It was written by a Russian composer named Tchaikovsky. The ballet at first was not very popular, but the music that Tchaikovsky wrote was. The ballet uses many different styles of dance from around the world. In the next clip, watch the two different dances, the tea dance and the candy cane dance. Can you find which one uses Cossack dancing? Please take the exit ticket found in your Google Classroom about the music of Russia. Next week, if you have music class, we will do a fun activity involving everything that we've learned the last two weeks. 
This is Mr. Scro. I will be here for the rest of the music period as you complete your exit ticket. If you have any questions, please let me know.